So, what do our uh, food safety schemes say? How, what kind, of, what kind of controls do we need to have in place within our food safety schemes to manage these allergens and deal with that food safety risk, which obviously the data shows us is very real. Well, SQF says that uh, it's uh, section 2.8, if anybody's interested in the SQF geek. And what it says is that you have to have a risk analysis of your raw materials and a register of those which are allergens. So you have to go through your whole entire ingredient list and say, okay, which one of those are allergens, identify those and have them on the list. Register is Australian for list, in case you didn't know that. SQF came from Australia, that's what it means. So you have to identify and store your raw materials and products as allergens. So any raw materials that are allergens, you have to have some way of designating them or identifying them, segregating them if necessary. Any products at all that are allergens, you have to identify. Got to have an SSOP or sanitation standard operating procedure for a changeover. We're going to talk a lot more about changeovers, but SQF requires that. Verification and validation of sanitation required by SQF. And again, that's why we're here. We're going to get into that a lot more later on. Uh, control of rework of allergens. Now, I know a lot of my manufacturer friends say, well, we don't do rework, so we don't have to worry about that. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on as well. Just because you don't call it rework doesn't mean you don't do it. And then allergens must always be in your hazard analysis. So that's one specific SQS ism that says you have to consider allergens within your hazard analysis. Doesn't mean you have to have them in your hazard plan. It just means you have to say, hey, these are an issue we've got to deal with. Okay. Um, if you look at the top nonconformances from SQF, really it's interesting that people were struggle the most is in validation, and they don't have them listed in their hazard analysis. Those are the two top allergen nonconformances that SQF has. Kind of surprising. I guess the validation is that. Anyway, any questions on it, anybody? Now, SQF also does have a allergen guidance document that's available for free on their website. I've got a hard copy here if anybody wants to take a look at it. Pretty good information, certainly consistent with what we're going to go over here in the next hour or so. Uh, but it's available there for your perusal. <coughs> you can see it. Any thoughts on SQF? All right, let's go to VRC. Surprisingly, a few differences. Uh, but I think the nuances are the same. Uh, list of, all, of raw ingredients, which are allergens. That's the same. Now, BRC wants you to do a risk assessment, not of just your raw materials, but your entire facility, which is a good idea. So that's one thing probably SQF should think about. So, SQ, uh, so BRC is asking that you do a risk assessment of your entire process for allergens specifically. So where do you have potential for cross-contact? Where do you have lines that cross over each other? Where do you have potential for aerosols? Where do you have you know, potential in formulations for issues or whatever? What are your risks? And we'll talk more about risk assessment here in just a minute as well. Same identification and storage of raw materials and products with allergens, same as SQ up there. So that's pretty common. Again, storing, identifying those raw materials and properly storing them as well as products in work in progress and properly storing them as well. Uh, clothing and identification of utensils and dedicated equipment for allergens. So do you have dedicated equipment for allergens? Do you have the dedicated utensils? Do you have dedicated clothing? Okay, kind of more specific there. SQR, BRC talks about production schedules, which I think kind of SQF infers BRC specifically spells out, which is a good thing. So how do you manage your air controls and how do you manage your production schedules? And we'll talk about that in a bit. And as we know, we want allergens to run at the end of the production schedule with as long a run as possible. We have to minimize our changeover. Uh, a good one that BRC has, restrictions for food brought on site. Okay, what's in your vending machine? What can your uh, employees bring in their lunch? Peanut butter and jelly sandwich. BRC talks about having a policy in place to restrict in food that's brought on site. So you can say, hey, we don't have any allergens. I don't have to worry about it. Okay, well, there's peanuts in your vending machine. And your employees got peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in their locker room. Let me ask you. Sure. Does that extend in the lunchroom? Well, you've got to have a policy that deals with how do you control it. 
So how do you train your people on what they need to be aware of, and then how do you restrict it and keep it out of the production room and away from products? Got to have policies that deal with that. That's what BRC is asking for. Again, SQF infers it. BRC specifically spells it out. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, interesting also, warning label when, prompt, when controls are not sufficient. BRC specifically says where we say that, well, we can't really control cross contact based on our process, based on our equipment, whatever. A warning label should be applied. Now, here in the United States, that's a no-no. Well, it's not a no-no. The key here is that warning labels do not preclude the need for a management system to deal with allergies. So not saying you can't use them, but don't use them in, in lieu of a mallard management plan. But BRC specifically says when you realize, eh, we can't figure it out, we'll just slap a warning label on there. Um, yeah. So SSOP for changeover, same. Verification, validation, sanitation, the same. Control or rework with allergies, the same. So a lot of similarities, a little bit more prescriptive on the BRC side than the SQF side. Um, but I think SQF kind of infers some of those things, and if you read their guidance document, it spells some of those out a bit more. But in the standard itself, it doesn't get as quite as prescriptive as BRC does. Okay. About FISMA, Food Safety Modernization Act. We heard a lot about that this week. Dr. Atchison did a tremendous job, as Trish talked about out of animal feed as well. What does FISMA say about allergens? Lots. <laughs> Spells them out specifically. Spells them out specifically as a hazard that you're going to have to build preventive controls for. Talk about a documented, uh, they're going to prescribe controls, but we haven't seen it yet. So what are those going to look like? We don't know. There's still a lot about FISMA that is still kind of up in the air. Uh, but one of them is, what are the expected allergen management controls that FDA is going to prescribe? We don't know yet but they will be coming. So what that means is basically where applicable, meaning when you do have one of those big eight, what are you going to have to do? Now, I would hope, I would expect, I would think, FDA is not going to go above and beyond anything that an SQF or a BRC doesn't already do, but you know, we don't know what we don't know. So we're telling them what we think they should have in their allergy programs, but in the, which is what I'm going to share with you next. But again, what's going to be in the final rule, we don't know. Trish? I think mean, the, the interesting thing for me in the FISMA rules was they redefined contamination here that, and introduced the term cross contact. Well, cross contact's been used. It's for a been while. used, but yeah. not in a legal component. Not in a legal True. Respect. No, it's good. So point. you can't just say it's contaminated now. It is, right. They do use this, the, the phrasing and similar to BRCs and SPFs with so cross contact. Right, which is what we'll talk through today, too. So that's a good point, and, and as Trish mentioned, uh, there is a difference. We don't talk about contamination when we talk about allergens because contamination is a biological term. We talk about contact, so cross contact. So in allergens, we're avoiding cross contact, not cross contamination. So it's a technical thing, semantics, but it does have, now it's going to carry some legal significance as well. Good point. Okay, so more to come on FISMA how it's going to affect us who are in the United States and also those who export into the United States. So remember, it's not just our 260,000 food manufacturers who are affected, but also everybody who imports into the United States as well. So what are the elements of an allergen management program? What are, what are we expecting here? Um, obviously, first and foremost, R&D. How, what, what kind of, and I'm going to go through each of these in more specifics, but you know, R&D, can we formulate products without allergens, make our life a whole lot easier. You know, don't use, uh, you know, uh, casein, don't use gluten, don't use it soy if you don't have to, if you find something else. Peanut, if you don't have to. Uh, raw materials, we're going to talk a lot about that. Storage, identification, etc. Utensil and equipment storage, identification, equipment design. Production scheduling, again, we're going to get into each of these specifically, and I'm not going to spend a lot more time on these because I know we really want to focus more on verification and validation. But again, I want everybody to be on the same page. Labeling and packaging, rework, again, what is rework? The one that's not 
up here now that I thought about probably certainly would be something we should add would be training. You know, understanding of your, you know, increasing your employee awareness at orientation and onboarding of what are our even if you don't even have it in your facility. You know, you can say, you know, by, by entering into the food industry, basically, you know, even if you're a meat plant that doesn't even have allergens, we all have to kind of have an awareness of what they are and how they affect us and how they can affect our customers. So even if you're a chicken plant and you don't have anything to do with allergens, you still have to have a program that basically says, we are educating our employees on allergens and what they mean and how they can impact our products and our customers. And orientation, because if, if someone's not in the food industry, they may not know this stuff. So as your, your responsibility bringing new employees into the food industry, you need to educate them on allergens, even if you don't carry them. Now if you do, obviously you need to educate them on what allergens are, and then how do we control them? What is your role in our control mechanism, control management programs that we have? 